I'm going to list the top three Canadian ETFs to buy going into 2024. Investors that are looking to take a passive approach to investing or buying stocks, this video was made for you. This is geared for more beginner investors, someone looking for a set it and forget it style of investing. Investing in the right ETFs can limit your risk when there's market volatility. I will break down my personal choice for the top three Canadian ETFs to buy going into 2024. You can buy one of these, all of these, or two out of three. These have been my most successful videos. I make these every year, so apologies if you've seen this four years in a row. 2022 was a volatile year with almost every stock in every sector tanking. 2023 is the opposite. Almost every stock has increased. The market is up 14% year to date. Some stocks like Nvidia are even up 250% this year alone. But if we look at the history of the market, usually after a large downturn, we have a few years of prosperity. I'm hoping that trend continues into 2024, which is how and why I chose these upcoming stocks. Before I get started, if you're a beginner or new to Canadian finance, I've created a course for you called Canadian Finance Pro. It's eight hours long, over 60 videos where I discuss budgeting, credit, inflation, managing debt, tax, where to invest, and how to invest for beginners. This video is just a snippet of what I'd include in the course. I've just introduced a new bonus as well. With every purchase, I'll do a one-on-one -on -one chat for one hour with every new member. Because of this time commitment, I'm limiting it to 10 customers per month. Only 10 people can purchase this course per month. XEQT is the first ETF I'm recommending. I would allocate 40% of my portfolio to this one ETF, currently trading at $27 per share. It's actually up 9% from when I recommended it last year. This ETF is the definition of diversified. You're indirectly investing in 9,261 different stocks all over the world. If you look up what's inside this ETF, it's actually just four other ETFs which might be confusing at first, but instead of you, the investor, finding four different ETFs to get global exposure and purchasing it yourself, you can do it with this one purchase. This is the iShares Core Equity ETF portfolio, which probably means nothing to you. It basically means all stocks, no bonds, no fixed income. This could be defined as risky since it's all equity, but since you're investing in the entire world, over the long term, I promise you'll be fine. It was only created four years ago, so we don't have that much data to judge its performance over the long term yet, but you can see a 37% return since the fund opened. They pay a quarterly dividend. The yield is 1.34% per year, which is slightly higher than last year, but you're not investing in this for the dividend. This is for capital appreciation only. The management expense ratio is 0.2%, which means for every $10,000 invested, you'll pay about $20 in fees. But this is not coming out of your pocket. You don't actually pay for this. It comes out of the return of the ETF. The manager takes it from the top, if that makes sense. If you're wondering what you'll exactly be investing in, remember I mentioned 9,261 stocks. Since you're investing in the global stock market, obviously you'll expect to see Apple and Microsoft at the top since they're currently the top two largest companies. We can also see where you're investing geographically. It's 45% in the US, 23% in Canada, and the rest spread out amongst developed countries. I'm comfortable leaving 40% in here and letting it run. I'll recommend alternatives to this ETF at the end of the video if you feel this is too risky and you want safer holdings or you're closer to retirement. XUS is my second choice. This is mandatory for every portfolio. I would put 30% of my portfolio into this one ETF, which is currently trading at $77 per share. It's actually up 19% this year alone. Many of the stocks in here are already included in XEQT. I know that I'm doing it on purpose. This ETF mimics the S&P 500 or the largest 500 companies in the US. These have historically been the best performers in the whole world and the largest, most important companies in the world. So I want extra exposure to these. That's why I'm recommending it. The management expense ratio is super low at 0.09%, which means if you invest $10,000, you'll indirectly pay $9 to the manager of the ETF. The largest holdings have a few familiar faces. Apple, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, or Meta, Tesla, Amazon, but you'll notice the weighting here is much larger than the previous ETF. 
since this is only US stocks, the previous ETF had global stocks, so you notice a little bit of a weighting difference. This ETF has a very rare semi-annual dividend of 1.07% per year, but you're not looking to buy this for the dividends, that's just a perk, you're here for the capital appreciation. 2022 was a bad year for the S&P 500 or global stocks in general. This ETF was down 14%, but this is just temporary. You can see it already rebounded, which is why I'm doubling down on these stocks. You can see the performance of the three-year, five-year, and 10-year of this uh, S&P 500 ETF. I always struggle with the last ETFs to choose. Uh, I'm still a sucker for dividends. That's how I started investing. I know some people like the instant satisfaction of getting a payout. So again, I'm going to recommend XEI. I'm going to add some dividend power to this portfolio. I would allocate 30% of my portfolio to this ETF. Since my channel is aimed for Canadians and I'm obviously a little biased, having extensively researched most of the companies of this fund, this ETFs invest in the highest yielding Canadian companies. Keep in mind, the largest Canadian companies pay a dividend, but with this ETF, you'll get paid monthly instead of quarterly, which is a nice little boost. The yield is currently 5.63% annually. So if you invest $10,000, you'll get $563 per year or $47 per month. The one downside is the management fee of 0.22%, meaning you'll indirectly pay $22 for every $10,000 invested, which is the highest on this list. Here's a summary of the industries you'll be investing in. 30% financials, meaning the big banks like TD, RBC. 57% in energy and utilities like Enbridge and Fortis. Then 11% in communications like TELUS, Bell, Rogers. All of these companies have been reviewed and re recommended on this channel in the past. I might even do a follow-up video to this just showing the best stocks to buy instead of just ETFs if there's enough interest for it. I know I was only going, going to recommend three ETFs, which I did, but I do recommend every, everyone having five to 10% of their portfolio in crypto, only if you have the money for it and if you understand. I would recommend buying the actual Bitcoin or Ethereum. Don't buy any ETFs or altcoins, just stick to the two biggest and stick to the coins themselves. I used to have around 10% of my portfolio in crypto. Last year, this was 150,000. However, crypto is up like 50% since that video. I'm currently sitting at 225,000 in crypto without adding any additional money in the last year. I'll stop there, that makes 100%. I recommend, uh, I mentioned earlier in this video, I'll recommend some safer versions of XEQT. Since that one is all stocks, some people might want safer, and safer means fixed income, AKA bonds, which also means interest payments. I'm not a fan of bonds. I'm not interested in very low or safe fixed income. But if you'd like, you can go with XGrow, XGRO, which has 20% bonds, which is a little safer. If you want safer than that, you can go XBAL or XBAL, which is 40% bonds. If you look at the returns of XGrow or XBAL, historically, they don't provide the same returns as XEQT, but they are safer and less stressful. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. I hate begging for likes, but my channel growth has been super low. I'm still trying to figure out the algorithm three years into my career. Thank you, and that's all, folks.